Good evening everyone, it is once again Ted the Speed Learner and tonight I'm going to start a video series called Memory and specifically what we're going to focus on is something called mnemonics and if you have never heard this term before you should watch the movie Johnny Mnemonic. Now mnemonics is a method that people use to help retain information for lengthy periods of time. Okay. And I covered this topic in a video that I uploaded a long time ago. I actually did updates to this video called Navigating My YouTube Channel. Why did I put the subject of mnemonics at the end of that YouTube video? Well, the reason for that was I was trying to get you guys used to something called YouTube cards and YouTube end screens. So you would click that and then see the actual result. Why did I want you to watch Navigating My YouTube Channel? The reason is that I have over 4,000 videos on my YouTube channel. Do you really want to search through all of those just to find a video like this? Of course not. I have playlists on my YouTube channel and I wanted you to see how to find that playlist not only if you're looking at this on your computer but also if you're watching this on TV or better yet what if you're watching this on your phone there you go and I made versions of this navigating my YouTube channel for the phone for the TV and also for the computer so you can find my content quickly and easily and that's what this is all about okay so so why do I want you to learn faster? Well, the main reason is that either you're going through school and you're being bombarded with a ton of information or you have a job and you need to go back to school but you don't have a whole lot of time to do that. Let me tell you something. I trained to be a pharmacy tech okay, at my workplace and I had to learn a whole ton of information in a very short period of time. If you're going to have to do something like that, you're going to need mnemonic techniques. It's just that simple. All right. Now, you have to also keep in mind, I've been on YouTube for 14 years. That's why I have 4,000 videos. I forgot to tell you that. I have also published five Kindle books. Now, if you have any hope of remembering all the information that I have presented over the last 14 years, you're going to need mnemonic devices. That's that's just a given. Okay. So, is there any other reason why you should do out mnemonic devices? Yes, there is. Have you ever heard the story of John Bunyan? If you have not heard the story of John Bunyan, you need to look it up. Okay. Now, the mnemonic techniques that I'm going to use in this book, in this video, and in my Kindle books, and in all, you know, and I can go on and on and on, they were all taken from a book that I discussed at the end of my Navigating My YouTube Channel video. Okay? If you want to know the title of that book, I suggest you go to my Navigating My YouTube Channel video and look it up. All right. What if you want to actually do this lesson? Well, the first thing you need to do is get a copy of the July 1996 edition of the Reader's Digest. Here it is. So if you have this Reader's Digest, and I hope you get it, then I want you to turn to page 14. At the bottom of the page you will th see three jokes. I will help you remember the middle joke. Okay, there's one at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle. The one in the middle is what I'm going to help you remember. Okay? Let's start with the first three words of the joke. How will you remember the number of employees? Okay? Do you recall me mentioning the word binary in several of my computer tutorials? Well, how many digits are involved in the word binary? That should be really easy to, to remember. Because if you do the etymology of the word binary, you know that the number is 2. Bi means 2. Alright. There are several words that can be used to express a mistake. One of them is error, but there is yet another one that we're going to refer to in this joke. 
It can be found in a September 1925 cartoon featured in the New Yorker magazine. Let me say that again. It can actually be found in a cartoon in the September 1925 edition of the New Yorker magazine. But if you don't have that available to you, then there is another way to see this. And I'm going to have a hyperlink down here in the description below. I want you to click it. But what you're going to see is a video clip of the movie Notting Hill. Okay, this movie features Hugh, Hugh Grant. His character in this particular scene of the movie trips and falls. Then Julia Roberts in her character responds to his fall and says the word that I am referring to in this video. If you don't know what I'm saying here, feel free to click the link in the description box. For this joke to actually work, do we want these employees stating that they made a mistake or do we want them to pretend that they didn't make a mistake? Well, let's look at the occupations of these employees. If you have ever heard of the name of Joseph Lister or Louis Pasteur, then you know what the occupations I'm referring to. And uh, if you were to say the word physician, physician, yes, but there is another word for that too. Okay. But what about the other occupation? Have you ever heard the names Penn and Teller, Harry Houdini, David Copperfield? What's their profession? Go ahead and let me know down here in the comments below. So now you know the second occupation that's mentioned in this joke. So how will you remember all these details? Let's start with the movie I mentioned earlier. Just imagine that Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts are standing on a naughty hill. Okay? Not a nice hill, but a naughty hill. How will you remember Hugh Grant? Well, just imagine that Hugh, or Hugh Grant, is an artist. You know, Hugh, okay? And he just received a grant to go to college. Well, how are you going to remember Julia Roberts? Well, the name of Julia happens to be a derivative of the name Julius. As in Julius Caesar, as in July, coming together for you now. So, this takes care of the first name, but what about her, the last name of Roberts? Well, just imagine that this particular Julia has a boyfriend named Robert. Okay, there you go. Now, how are you going to remember the name of Joseph Lister? Well... If you take care, if you do, if you do anything with mouthwash, you you should automatically know who this guy is. But anyway, so let's imagine that Joseph here is sitting on the naughty hill, but he is experiencing fatigue. He is basically listless. Ever heard the word listless? There you go, listless, listler, lister. And what about Louis Pasteur? Okay, now imagine this naughty hill has a pasture on the hill and imagine that this hill is located in St. Louis, Illinois or in St. Louis, Illinois, St. Louis, Missouri my mistake, sorry, correction but imagine that this naughty hill is in St. Louis, Missouri so far so good now let's imagine that Harry Houdini and if you guys don't know who Harry Houdini is watch some clip, video clips about him you'll get it let's imagine him sitting on this naughty hill He's writing a detective novel. It's a whodunit book. And what about David Copperfield? Okay. Let's imagine that David finds a field of copper on the top of this naughty hill. There you go. Alright, so now you can remember the basic details of the joke, plus some extra interesting facts on top of that. Alright, now, go back to your Reader's Digest. This time you're going to go to page 17, and you will see three jokes on this page. The joke we will focus on the fo joke we will focus on in this case involves someone serving in the Coast Guard. Now, if you are a regular person and you buy uh, body soap, you should know the name of one of the body soaps. Get it? Okay. Now, the next thing I will have you picture in your head is a weather radio. There are two purposes for remembering the weather radio. I'll show you those in just a second. 
Notice that the what that notice that weather radios can obtain power from a wall plug-in. Okay, you can plug these puppies in, or you can have batteries in them, or you can have both. But honestly, I would not have the batteries in there while you have it plugged into the wall because it'll drain both. Not a good idea. But they can also, like I said, they can also obtain power from a rechargeable battery. That means that this weather radio has two sources of power. If the primary power source of the weather radio is, de is derived from the outlet in the wall, then you know that the weather radio battery isn't the primary power source. So, if it's not the primary power source, can you think of another name for it? Well, if you can, associate that word, the non-primary power source, okay, which would be secondary or some other word. So you're thinking secondary power source, but then you think of another word, and then you would associate that with the Coast Guard person. The other aspect of the weather radio will be used for this illustration is the fact that the weather, weather, the radio, the weather radio, uh, alerts unsuspecting people of precipitation in some form. And as we all know, precipitation is, a, is some form of water. So why would anyone own a weather radio? Well, the information the weather radio provides can keep people from life-threatening injuries. So now we have the words water and safety. Both words are involved in this joke. This particular Coast Guard person likes to eat pastries. Specifically, he likes to eat brownies. These particular brownies are light and fluffy. That's because they are full of air. Why is this detail so important? Because the Coast Guard person served in another branch of the military. Based upon what I told you of the brownies, can you guess which branch of the armed forces this Coast Guard person had previously served in? Now these brownies have won ribbon awards. That's why this Coast Guard person is eating the brownies. This is how you will remember that the Coast Guard person was a decorated soldier. But what's the significance of the brownies? What if I told you that the brownies were young and female? Can you think of an organization that derives its name from, from young female brownies? The next thing to imagine is that the ribbons are in gift boxes. This will help you remember the word giving. This Coast Guard person was talking to a group of young ladies who were selling lemonade for a profit. That means they were earning money. Now let's imagine the young ladies earn ribbons instead of money. So let's review. We have the Coast Guard person and ribbon giving, the young ladies and ribbon earning. Okay, They're earning their ribbons, but the Coast Guard person is getting the, the he was given these ribbons okay at this point you should be able to guess the rest of the joke the real task is to see if you can remember all these details alright everything is now up to you can you remember all this let me know down here in the comments below if you can or if you are still struggling let me know and Definitely get yourself an issue of the July 1996 Reader's Digest before you uh, give up on this video. Alright, I will tell you more in a future video, so I'd like for you to stay tuned.